Ayan Aleph, not 71. And we're starting from Amarava, which is about 10 lines down. We had a, I'm sorry, we're starting from Umi Islela Rava Greira. That is six lines down, six lines down. We just had a Machleka Sabayan Rava. It's talking about if someone har- harvests grain and then grinds the grain on Shabbos, but he doesn't know that it's Shabbos. If that's the case, then he's only high of one carbon for that. Then he went ahead and he harvested grain and ground grain again, but he knew that it was Shabbos this time, but he doesn't know that grinding and harvesting, harvesting and grinding, that's the order, harvesting and then grinding would be Yasser. So when it came to the carbon, in the middle, he didn't know that he did a sin. It's only afterwards he finds out that he committed a sin. So what he finds out first, in the first case, is the first statement here of Rava, is that he finds out that he did the, the, the Neidalai, um, Alaksiri. He finds out first that, that he harvested. Um, uh, that he harvested and ground. He finds out first that he harvested and ground in the, that it was Shabbos. So that would make him chay of one carbon. One chay of, it would be chay of one carbon. Then what happens is that because harvesting and grinding is the same as harvesting and grinding, so, and he didn't know in the middle, so that first harvesting and grinding covers the second one. It's called, with the shigas malachas, when he forgets that those malachas are asa. But let's say it would be the opposite. Let's say he finds out that he, after these two, these, these, four, uh, these four acts of harvesting and grinding and harvesting and grinding, the first two is forgetting Shabbos, but knowing that if it would be Shabbos, it would be asa. The second two, that forgetting that it's asa, but knowing that it's Shabbos. He finds out then that harvesting is usher. So he has high of one carbon for harvesting. That's the second one. That would, he, that would be two separate carbonas for harvesting and grinding. So he's high of one carbon for harvesting because that's what he found out. So then that harvesting, because it's the same as harvesting, he's high of one carbon for both harvestings. That means that one carbon that he's high of will cover the first harvesting. The interesting thing is, is that everyone agrees that because that harvesting is together with grinding, so he's going to be, that one carbon is going to cover three of them, harvesting, harvesting, and then the grinding. The only one that's not going to cover is that other grinding that when he forgot that that malacha is also. So let's say I, let me put it on a piece of paper. Give me one second. Let me get a pen. I'll make it easier. Oh, you know what? I could do it like this. I forgot about these. This feature. Let's do this. So I have. Uh, this is. Kaitzer. I'm making a cuff for Kaitzer. One second. Kaitzer, and then I have. Let's make a test for Teichen because it's hard to write over here. Uh, I'll write it out. Oh, you know what? Should I do it as a text? The Baron, you know how to do this? Say the, say the question again? Should I do it as a text or is this okay? Uh, I think it's fine for Okay. Me. For an amateur. Okay, so this group here of Kaitzer and Teichen, this is when he forgot it was Shabbos. This is called Shoigig for Shabbos. Oops, let's do that. For Shabbos. 
That's this is the shaggy Shabbos, and this is the shag, this is the shagig of the malacha. So what happens is at this point, we said that if he remembers this thing here, if he remembers this, so then Excuse one carbon would Rabbi. cover all four. Excuse me, Rabbi, I'm not seeing anything on the screen. Oh really? Oh boy. I can still see you, but I'm not seeing. Okay, so I, let me right. clarify. Does anyone else see? I see your I I see see screen screenshot, yes. I, 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 yeah. I we should close it's, down it's, and start again. No, it, you got to close your phone or computer. Yeah, and start again. Who? I should? No. No, Paul. Well, no, Naftali. Naftali. Yeah. Do you we see me, Rabbi Naftali? Computers, yeah. You see me? I just got in. It took like five times to try. Yeah, Jeff, you the same thing. If you can't see, you should close down and start again. Should I should I continue explaining this, or should I wait? Okay, L let me go over um, what's happening here. If it's forgetting Shabbos, then one malacha, one chatas, one carbon covers all the malachas. If it's forgetting the malachas, then you need a separate carbon for each malacha when you find out. That's the basic. That's what we learned in the Mishnah. What's happening here? is that he's forgetting Shabbos in one case. In another case, he's forgetting the Malachas. So when he finds out what he did wrong, if he finds out that it's, if he finds out this Shabbos part first, that he forgot that it was Shabbos, now he knows that it's Shabbos. So that will cover all four Malachas. All four will get covered in, in, with one carbon. However, if he finds out about the Malacha and he finds out just about Kaitzer, so then this kaitzer covers the first kaitzer. And because it covers the first kaitzer, so it's called greira. Greira means to draw or drag. It will drag the teichen together with it because remember this kaitzer needed one chatas that would cover the teichen as well because this was forgetting Shabbos. This was always one carbon chatas. So once he, once he gets this one in, so it's like grandfathered in, it covers that as well. What's the issue is this last one over here. Now, Abaya held that it covers this one as well, because look, the kaitzer covers the kaitzer. The kaitzer covers the teichen. The teichen obviously covers the other teichen. Just like the kaitzer and the kaitzer went together, this one goes together. Rav says, no, kaitzer goes to kaitzer. There's a chiddush here that kaitzer goes to teichen, but it's not going to go further to the next teichen. Okay, that's what we learned before. And now, let's stop this here. Okay. Um... Let's start from from uh, uh, Umiyasle Lerava, and hopefully it'll uh, hopefully we'll make it clear. If this question, stop me, and I'll explain. Umiyasle Lerava Greira, does Rava hold of dragging along one thing to an, to one? If you have one a chatas for one malacha, you can dr drag into that another thing as well. Now, what we're discussing here is that we know that the kaitzer the harvesting will take together with it the other harvesting. That's considered one harvesting, even though it was done in, with two separate forgettings, forgetting Shabbos or forgetting that it's Asr, we know that that's going to be considered one. The Chiddush here in what we're questioning is when Rav says that the harvesting is one, he also says that the first harvesting will drag along with it the grinding under the category of forgetting Shabbos. Does Rav really hold that you can say greira? that you can drag along the grinding together with the harvesting, that that wasn't even what he remembered yet. He re first remembered his first, he designated the carbon first for the harvesting of forgetting that harvesting is us. We have a problem, but it's stated, someone ate two olive sizes of forbidden fat with one forgetting that it was us. And now he knows that he ate one of them. He still doesn't know about the other one. The first one, let's say. He knows about the first one. He knows that he ate, one of them was no good. One of the things that he ate was forbidden. He still doesn't know the second one. And he goes ahead and he eats a third one. So, Amar Rava, Rava's opinion is, heavy carbon alrishan, if afterwards he finds out about 
about everything. If he designates this carbon for the first one, so then Rishon Vishenim is Kaprim. The first two are covered because the first two were done in the same forgetting. So the carbon for the first one will cover will cover the carbon will cover for the second one as well because the first two was one forgetting, so it requires one carbon. Gimelena is Kapr, but the third one isn't counted in that forgetting because he already knew about the first one. There was already idea. There was already not awareness of the first one, which he designated the carbon for before he ate the third one. So that's already divided for a separate carbon. However, heavy carbon ala shlishi. If he brings a carbon for the third kazayas, shlishi v'sheni miskaprim. Remember the third and the second were both in the same category. They were both in the same forgetting. He didn't know about this, the second one when he ate the third one. He only found out later. So, however, Rishon ain't a miskaper, but the first one doesn't go along with that because the first one had an awareness in between the first and the second. So now he's bringing carbon for the third. It will take the second because that was the same forgetting, but not the first. Hevi carbon al sorry, this is the interesting one. If he designates a carbon for the second one, now the second one was eaten, second Kazayas was eaten together with, in the same forgetting as the first one. And it was, he also didn't have awareness of the second one when he ate the third one. So the second one was like a bridge between both of them. So Niskaprakulam, he brings a carbon for the second Kazayas, it covers all three. What we want to bring out from this is that the way Rava had it before, he designated a carbon for the Ktsira, the second harvesting. That goes back to the first harvesting and covers that. But not only does it go back to the first harvesting, it also drags along with it the grinding of the first one, which that he never designated for. Now, the problem is that that's called greira. That's dragging along. Now, over here, if Rava holds of greira, then when he brings a carbon for the first one, because it covers the second one, the second one should automatically cover the third one because that goes together. And over here, a Rava says, says that it doesn't do that. You can only get two together. If you do the first one, you get the second one. If you do the third one, you get the second one. According to the way Rava was saying before, you should also get the third one automatically, whichever one you choose. Abaya Amar Abaya says, "Afilu hevi carbon alechad mehem neskapur kulam." Abaya goes according to his opinion that you say you do say greira. It's a kasha right now on Rava. Rava says that we said greira before. He, Rava doesn't say the greira to the extent of Abaya that it should cover the second grinding as well, but it still covers the first grinding, which was in one category with the with the harvesting. So why are you saying that? Rava says that you say greira that you can drag along another prohibition. To cover with the chatas, Rava doesn't hold of that. You see over here, the Gemara answers. Basar the shame ma'abaya savra. This historically, this discussion here of two types, two uh, uh, three kazesim of chelav that are eaten, in two different forgettings. Um, this is an earlier machlekes than the, than what we had before about Ketzira. And after they argued about this, Rava was convinced that Abaya was correct. And then we have the other Machlaikas regarding Ketzira, Ketzira and, and Teichan, harvesting and grinding. And over there, Rava already accepted the opinion of Abaya. So Gemar says, Oh, if that's the case, then why is there still a Machlaikas about the grinding and harvesting? Tchina nami tigra letchina. So why doesn't it drag along the fourth grinding? That corner case, why doesn't it drag that along according to Rava? We still had a machlekes there. If Rava already agree, agreed to Abaya, the Gemara says, greater is like, greater the greater less like. Rava will say that the harvesting will cover the first harvesting. Once it covers the first harvesting, 
So that goes together with the first grinding because that's under the category of forgetting Shabbos. That goes together as one. But then for that grinding to then drag along with it, the other grinding of forgetting the malacha of grinding, that is not going to do. That's called greira de greira. That's a double, uh, twice removed from the original uh, uh, sin that he's aware of. So that's not going to cover it. Okay. Now, are there any questions on this? It's complicated. <laughs> uh, okay. Milsa de Psitale la Baya Verava mi Baya Lela Rabzera. What we're saying now is that Abaya and Rava both agree that if there's no awareness of that a sin was committed, it's considered one sin, even though there is an awareness of, even though the forgetting has switched. And there's two separate sins with two separate forgettings. Abai and Rabbah consider that one sin. The first sin was he forgot the first violation. First violation was that he forgot when he forgot that it's Shabbos. The second violation is he forgot that that malacha was forbidden. And nevertheless, those two combine to be one violation. So is that concept that they can combine is simple to Abai and Rava. However, mi boy leila Rabzeira. Rabzeira wasn't so sure about that. The boy Rabzeira Merabasi. Rabzeira asked from Rabasi. Now there's a second version of this question. And Rabzeira is not the one that's asking the question. Varmila, some say, some say Rabzeira was answering the question. And he was being asked by Rabzeira. It goes like this. Kotsar v'tachan chatsi gregris v'shigig ha-shabbos v'zad ha-malachas. V'chazar v'katsar v'tachan chatsi gregris v'zad ha-shabbos v'shigig ha-malachas. Mahu shi'it starfil. The question is posed in the perfect scenario to see if it can combine. What we did was, first he forgets that it's Shabbos, but he knows that if it would be Shabbos, grinding and harvesting would be forbidden. Harvesting and grinding would be forget, for, forbidden. But he doesn't know that it's Shabbos, he forgot. Or whatever, he thinks it's Sunday or whatever. Then he does the same grinding and the harvesting and grinding, but now he doesn't know that it's forbidden. He knows that it's Shabbos, he doesn't know that it's forbidden. Now the size that he, that, he, that he did, the size that he harvested, the size that, have, that he ground, is each one less than a shear. Half a zayas in the first case, and half a zayas in the second case. Now if you say that no awareness of sin in the middle combines, and here he's not aware, so then he did a full malacha. If you say that it's differentiated, it's, there's a division there because there was different forgettings, and he didn't do a malacha. Now this was the shaila. And now Bayan Rava would definitely say that it combines. But this was a shaila that was either Rabzeira asked or was asked to Rabzeira. And the response was, Had they been a full kazayas, you would have to bring two separate karbanas. So therefore they don't combine. That's the answer. Very different than what Abai and Rava would have said. The Gemara now challenges that, that statement. I thought we... I thought we just said that if it's in one helm, you don't bring two carbonos. If it's in one helm, that means one forgetting. The question is, what is a helm? Here, it's a one helm means one forgetting of Shabbos, or one helm means one forgetting of of that this malach is also. Here, it's one helm of of violation but he actually re- now knows that it's Shabbos, but he forgot that the Malacha was Aser. So he switched, he switched mm-hmm. his excuse. He switched his excuse in middle. They said, they, they, come, they say, uh, they said, what are you doing? Uh, he says, oh, yeah, the first half of Kezayas, I forgot that it was Shabbos. Yeah, but what about the second half? Oh, he says, yeah, I forgot that it was Aser. Got it, got it. So, Abayan Rava hold that that's considered one. 
malacha because he didn't remember, he didn't know at all that he did a sin in the middle. And they say that, no, that's considered two. The Gemara asks, one second, the logic that you just used here to divide it up, that it's not considered, let's, let's use the, the terms here. There's chaluk and lachatois. That means if a full malacha was done, you would have to bring two, two, two kar- karban chatas. And then there's the mitzdarif. Mitzdarif is combining less than a shear that it becomes a, malach, a full malacha. We just said that if it's chaluk and lachatois, if it was a full shear, you would have to bring two karbanas. Automatically, that means that it doesn't combine if it's less than a shear. The Gemara challenges that. He says, v'chalhecha de chaluk and lachatois le Every time that it's a separate um, carbon chatas, if it's a full shear, it won't combine if it's less than a shear. It's not so pashat. Look at this. But Tanan, we have a Mishnah. If someone eats chalev twice, in one forgetting. Now, why is it considered eating twice if it's in one forgetting? Well, it turns out that he waited in between six minutes or whatever. It's considered a, a, a separate uh, achila. It's more than kadei achilas pras, the amount of time it takes to eat half a loaf of bread. He waited that, he paused in between these two um, forbidden fats. So it's two eatings, and it's considered one because he doesn't have any awareness of the sin in the middle. So... In a chayv alach, it's chayv one carbon. That's called helamachas. Ochal chayla v'dam v'noisu pickle behelamechad chayv alkalachas vachas. Let's say he did three different sins. He here it's four four sins: forbidden fat, he drank blood, he noiser what's left over from a carbon uh, over the time over the lim, limitation that he has to eat it, and pickle he had the the thoughts of. Uh, sprinkling the blood and uh, out of the uh, t- allotted time, and then he eats from it. So, and he's all forgetting. He doesn't know that any of these things are forbidden when he eats it. He's chayef for each one. They're separate sins. He's chayef for each one. Chatas. This is a stringency when you have different types over when it's one type. Obviously, it's four chatas versus one chatas. In the following, what we're about to say, is going to be a stringency over one type, uh, in one type over many types. What is that? If he eats a half a zayas, and then he eats another half a zayas, that's going to combine. And... There's a pause in the middle, more than Achilles Pras. It's going to combine to a shear. However, Mishnei Minim, it's Pater. But if one of them is Chelev and one of them is Dam, that's not going to combine. So you see, there's a stringency of one type. We have a question on this. If it's one type, is that really a Chiddush? It's considered one Achila. I'm sorry. We're going to need to say, uh, we're going to need to go back on that. We're going to need to say that it wasn't considered, it wasn't a Kedei Achilas Pras in the middle, or else there would have been a, a big Kedesh here. He did not wait more than Achilas Pras. That's why it combines. The Gemara asks on this, okay, uh, why is it even considered to Achilas is a, is a problem? How does it, why is it Chazar V'achal? It's in, in the same shir. I, mean, I don't know. Whatever the case is, he was, he ate a half a zayas, and then he ate another half a zayas. It's within a Kadeh Pras. He didn't remember it all in between. He's Chayev. The Gemara asks, Trichel Amemar, that's, that's, you have to tell me that. He ate one Kazayas. Vamar Rishlakish Mishum Bartutni. Rishlakish says name of Bartutni. That's uh, uncommon. Um, yeah, there's a chiddush over here. The chiddush is, is that he ate it in two recipes, in two separate dishes. Now, there is an opinion, the opinion of Rabbi Yeshua. Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua holds that 
if someone eats two kazesim of chalev, but in different dishes, the different dishes that he has divides it up. And it's considered separate eatings. He's not eating it plain. He's eating it in, in, uh, in some sort of stew. So those two separate dishes divided up and he's high of a separate chatas for each one. So what's happening here is that he's eating a half a zayas plus a half a zayas. Now, Rabbi Yeshua holds that if you ate a full kazayas in two separate dishes, you would need two chatas. Now we're seeing from Rabbi Yeshua that you're eating a half a zayas plus a half a zayas in two separate dishes and it's combining. This creates a problem for us. It says, well, but first let's see, what's the Chiddush over here? That mahu the tema am Rabbi Shua bein l'kula bein l'chumra. I could have thought that Rabbi Shua holds that it's divided up bein l'kula. means it's divided. And it's not considered a sin because, over here because it's half a zayas and half a zayas, that's the l'kula. That Rabbi Shua divides it for lenient to say that it's not a sin at all. Bein l'chumra, he divides it up for stringency. That means if you had a kazayas plus another kazayas in their separate dishes, it's considered two sins, Yechayev twice. Kamash Malan, it's coming to Chiddush over here, is the Lekula Layamar, Lechumra Kamar. He only says that it's considered two chatois, that's Lechumra. But Lekula, to say that it's not a sin at all, because it's a half plus a half, that he doesn't say. And he says that you're going to be combine them, even though they're in two separate dishes. What's the issue? Gemara spells it out. You see that if it's divided up into two chatois, it doesn't mean that it doesn't combine to become one chatois. See, if you go up uh, half the page, what we learned before the start of this, so that one of the difficulties in learning Gemara is that the, um, the question that we, we're asking is several questions ago. <laughs> so you have to follow this. Um, the, the question was that they asked from Rabzeira, Rabzeira asked, would half a kazayas grinding, uh, let's say, combine with another half a kazayas grinding um, if, the, if the forgetting if the unawareness was two separate things. Uh, that was his question. The first unawareness was forgetting Shabbos. The second unawareness was forgetting that it was Asr. Would that combine to be one malacha? And they responded, well, because it would have been two separate chatois, if it would have been a full kazayas, therefore it doesn't combine. And therefore it's not considered a, a malacha. Now, what we just proved from Rabbi Yeshua was that if there's two kazesim in separate dishes, separate s- stews in two tamchuyim, he would say that that's divided for chatas. That's two separate chatas. If it's less than a kazayas, each one. Now, officially, that should be well. If it's two chatas, then it should not, not combine. We, found, we find out now that Rabbi Shua says it does combine. So it's not parallel. Um, Chatas, the amount of chatayis to combining to create a shear. It's, 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 uh, it's not symmetrical. It doesn't uh, match perfectly the way we want this to, to line up. So this is a question. This is the, the, the question. Um, Amar Lei, so he responds, Mara Reisha Masni Lava Kashle, Anana Seifa Masni Lava Le Kashalan. Well, your question is just based on um, the Vahavinamba. You asked, what is the Chide? Vahavinamba means we deliberated upon this. We had a, a, a we quoted a Brysa. The Brysa says that there's a difference between Chelev, two Kazesim of Chelev, to, uh, to Neisar, to Chelev, Neisar, Pigel, whatever, and Dam. Um, we said this is a stringency of different sins to one sin. And then we went on and we said, this is a stringency of one sin over many, over many uh, violations. One violation over many violations. Um, and the way we divided that up was that if you ate a, a chatzizayas and it's one violation, then it will combine. If it was two separate violations, then it doesn't combine. So 
we deliberated on the first part. If it was one violation, it combines. What are you trying to tell me? Of course it combines. So we answer that it's two separate stews. And nevertheless, it combines to create a, a shear. According to Rabbi Shua, that's a chiddush. He says, he's responding, that that's not really what the deliberation was on. The deliberation was on the second part. And therefore, we don't have a question. Uh, how does it go? Anan kashalan. It says if you have a half a zayas of chelav and a half a zayas of dam, it doesn't combine. You have to tell me that forbidden fat doesn't combine to blood to be a prohibition. Each one was less than uh, was less than a shear. You know what we meant shnei minim? We didn't mean shnei minim. Two, two different types. We didn't mean forbidden fat mixing with blood. We mean that it's one type. But my carlish name mean him. If it's one type, so why do you call it two types? Two different violations. The answer is because it was eaten from two different stews. Rabbi Yeshua here, and it's the opinion of Rabbi Yeshua that says two different dishes separated. And he says normally two separate dishes separated. So you know what the chiddush is here? Exactly the way you said before. It's exactly the way you wanted it to go. That the Rabbi Shua holds. That if it's two separate dishes, it, it, uh, it's separated and it doesn't combine. So exactly what we want, said before, that if it's divided for chatois, it doesn't combine to be one chatois. Bringing a chatois is a kula or chumla? Bringing more than one chatas, the Gemara calls it, is a chumra. Um, dividing it up so that there's no chatas here, chopping the avir in half so that there's no chatas here is considered a kula. So our terms here, Rabbi Shua, what, he's, what Rabbi Shua is doing is he's chopping the sins and the, the violations into segments because it's in two different uh, stews. So when now, you eat less than a kazais, it's not a avir. When you eat less than a kazai, <laughs> you're asking a complicated question. Uh, when you eat less than a kazai, is... bringing a chatas is not a kula? Bringing a chatas would, in that case, well, what we're saying, not bringing the chatas is the kula. You don't need to bring a chatas because it doesn't combine to be a real prohibition. It's divided up. Okay. It's divided up. That's a leniency. Because it's less than a shear, but his point is yeah. sometimes the chazal consider it a kula because you have you have you uh, have atonement, you have a kapara, right? Right. It, right, right. The terms here, you're right, you're right, you're right. The terms here, just to, for to, for clarity, the term here, the kula, is telling me that I don't need to bring it. I think it's referring more like, like a, a financial expense. A financial, I mean, right? That's a spiritual, right? The spiritual bringing of chatos is a is a kula. You're getting in the way right. of it. I mean. I agree. I agree with Chaim Drillin on everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Point here is what Rabbi Smith was saying: because it's a chetzi shear, it could be both. I think is what he was saying. Because the Gemara says what you're saying by a regular chatos, but. Here it's a chetzi shear, so it's not only financial, it's a chetzi shear. Right. A chetzi shear, even though he had two chetzi shears, but it doesn't combine. It doesn't combine. So it's less than the. Uh... Okay, now the Gemara has a question. It says, Okay, now you divided that when you said two, you really meant one. When you said it's two separate violations, it's really one violation. However, it's two separate um, dishes. And we said that it's not going to combine to create a, a one full shear. We're on top of the page, ayin aleph and bez. Mechlal, that must mean the resha minachad v'tam chiyachad. We're getting, this is classic uh, Gemara uh, logic, where once we give an answer, we complicate it now. We said, okay, so if you said, you just said two cases. One is where it's one type. One is where it's two types. When it's two types, it's divided. 
So you asked, two types is divided? Of course it's divided. So you said, no, the two really means that it's one type. Uh, it's just divided because it's in two different dishes. I said, okay, so then what did you mean by the one type? It must be, it's not even in two different dishes. So then, so then what's your chedesh about that? So this could go back and forth. It doesn't over here, it just does. Uh, you have to tell me if it's one type and it's in one dish that you're going to be high of, that it's going to combine. Beautiful answer. Beautiful answer. The Gemara gives us an answer that we're talking about that he actually knew in between his first half and his second half of Kazayas of Chelev, he actually knows that he, that he has a full awareness that he did a sin, half a sin, full awareness that he did half a sin, 100% awareness of half a sin. Rabbi Gamliel holds that because half a sin isn't a sin, that's not considered awareness. So therefore, it'll still combine. It's the same dish, the same sin. He has a yediyah ben tayim, and it's still mitztaref to be that he has to bring a chatas afterwards. Why? Because a chatishir isn't a isn't a yediyah of of a violation. The Ritva asks on this gemara a, a, a question. This question is like this. What was our original issue here? Why are we getting into this? We said anything that's divided for chatois is also needs to be needs to be divided that it won't combine to create a, a prohibition. Let's take a look at Rabbi Gamliel. If it would have been a full shear and he has Yediyah being tayim, it would have been divided for chatois. Now it's less than a shear. We're compelled to say that if it's that if it's divided for chatois, it has to be divided that it shouldn't combine. Comes along our gemara and says, no, it's less than a shear and it does combine. What the whole gemara was trying to do, it just messed up at the end by telling me that it's divided for chatois and it doesn't and it still combines for for less than a shear. The Ritva answers that it's not a problem with Rabbi Gamliel because we don't pass them like Rabbi Gamliel. Uh, the question is, is this very strong question? I mean, that's like a, a daifek teret, but, um, but that's the only way out. But, okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's see the next Gemara. Itmar, it was stated. Ochal, there's a lot of, of the Gemaras here are combined, but you can look at them separately and it, it, uh, it makes it a little more simple. If you try to combine it, all of the things together, it gets complicated. Although there are connections. It's my, it was stated. Someone, he ate two kzesim of chalev and one forgetting. What is forgetting? He didn't realize that it's, uh, that this was chalev or um, it was b'shagig. Then, after he ate both kazesim, he finds out about the first one. So he's chayi v'chatas on the first one. Once he has awareness, he's chayi v'chatas. And then, he, then he's notified about the second one. Now, it's not clear right here in the Gemara what his awareness is. Is his awareness, when he say, he is aware, doesn't mean that he designated a carbon as well. And that's why we have another question. Once he designated the carbon for the first one, maybe because he wasn't aware of the second, because now he has to designate another one. Or is it just, just a plain awareness? It goes like this. Rabbi Yechonon Amar Chayev Shtayim, Reish Lakish, Amar Enechayev Alachas. Rabbi Yechelen says he's high of two karbanas. Shlaker says he's only high of one. Let's see the sources for this. Um, if, this if what we're learning here bothers you, because it seemed before that only awareness in between was an issue, not an awareness afterward. Awareness in between was breaking up the sin into segments, into different sins. Now we're talking about awareness after the sin. 
t- awareness of one is like separating into separate things. That's an issue, but it could possibly be resolved as the Gemara goes on. Otherwise, we're going to have to say that everything we learned until now was only going according to Rish Lakish, who holds that it, does, that it combines it. See, if you follow Rish Lakish, it's all one sin, it's all combined, great. Uh, unless there was awareness in between the sins, that would have divided it up. We have no issue. We do have an issue with Rabbi Yechanan. We'll have to figure out how it works. What's the source for this? Rabbi Yechanan Merchayev. Rabbi Yechanan says that he's Chayev um, separately. Chayev Shtayim, he means. Why? Because Al Chatosay Behevi. When someone says, uh, where's the Pasuk? Um, someone, uh, let me see what the Pasuk is. If he becomes aware of his sin, uh, that he sinned, and he brings car- a carbon, it's a siras izim, it's a goat, a female goat, um, for, this, for the sin that he sinned. For Gechon's medayek, al chatase behevi, that even a small amount of the sin, he has to bring a carbon, which means that he has to bring a carbon per sin. Rishlakis has a has a, a diak from mechatasai. From his sin means even partial sin he gets atonement. The, the from his the partial sin he gets atonement for the whole sin. Rabbi Yechlan's diak is that he has to bring a karban behavi for even um, a segment a part, a part of the sin. And Rishlakis says he gets atonement for even from just a part of the sin. One second, you have to bring a separate carbon per sin. What does Rishlakish do with that? He says, Rishlakish agrees that it's possible, but that's only if not only was he aware of part of the sin, not only did he separate a, a sacrifice before he knew the second part of the second uh, Kazayas, but he even offered the, offered the sacrifice. Then he finds out that he ate another one, so he never had any awareness of the second uh, kazayas. He never had atonement for it. He wasn't even aware for it. It doesn't, uh, the chatas isn't going to atone if he didn't even know about it. So he already brought the chatas. It was sort of like a benefit to delaying bringing the chatas. Maybe he did other sins, according to Rish Lakish. It will cover more sins. But if he, even Rish Lakish would agree that if he actually brought the chatas, then it's not going to cover it by not knowing. So he has a good use for Rabbi Yechanan's Pasuk. Rabbi Yechanan, what does Rabbi Yechanan do? Apparently, uh, it should cover it. Even part of the sin gets atonement. Rabbi Yechanan says, Rabbi Yechanan says, Rabbi Yechanan says, Very interesting case. He ate a kazayas and a half. He only, he's only aware of the kazayas. Now, after the, he sinned, he's only aware, he has awareness of a kazayas. The half of kazayas he wasn't aware of. And then he goes and he eats another half of kazayas while still not aware of the second half. Let's say there's four quarters here. The first two um, he's aware of, that's a full kazayas. And the second two, he's not aware of. So, Mahu the Tamalit Sarufe, I could say like this, the first three half Zesim, I should say that they combine together. I'm second, one second. Mahu the Tamalit Sarufe. I should say that they combine, the second two kazesim should combine because he wasn't aware of it. Kamash Malan, that it gets covered by the first one. And he doesn't need to bring a separate carbon for the second two kazesim. Why? 
because Rabbi Yechanan's opinion is that one second, how does this work? Yeah, yeah. The, this half a zayas for Rabbi Yechanan gets covered by the first one because it's not a full shear. So he doesn't really need a, he doesn't really need an independent awareness of it to cover it. So what are, what are we getting from here? Mecha tase v'nislach that he gets atonement for the other half of Zayas together with, together with the carbon for the first Zayas. And therefore it doesn't combine and it doesn't need a separate carbon. The third um, part of this, the third uh, half of Zayas doesn't combine with the fourth half of Zayas because it gets covered by the first Chathas. Okay. That's like the leniency that Rabbi Yechanan has in here from the Mecha Tasa, even that he does get atonement from a partial, uh, partial Chatas. Amalei Ravina le Ravashi. Ravina asked Ravashi the question that we've been discussing when, in regards to this. What's going on over here? This Machlekes Rabbi Yechanan Rishlakish, he finds out afterwards that he did part of it, not, not all of it, and then he separates the carbon, and the question is, does it cover the whole thing or part of it? Are they arguing where he finds out before he separates a carbon? And that's the machlekes here. And Ubaha Pligi, and the following is the machlekes. The Marsover Yediyah Machalkes, Rabbi Yechanan holds that just the awareness of half of it already divides it up, and now he needs two carbonus. Marsover Afrashas Machalkes, and Rishlakesh holds no. You wait a minute, he find out the next one. Look, he had a... Um, he had um, a kazesim of chalev. Put some in, in his eggs in the breakfast. He put some in his uh, uh, whatever, tuna for lunch. Uh, I don't know, whatever. He had another, you know, mixed milk and meat and, uh, and fish. Uh, whatever, he had to, uh, something for, for dinner. He's like, oh, wait, that was chalev. Okay, so one second, I ate it for breakfast. Oh, I ate it for lunch. Oh, I ate it for supper. So according to Rabbi Yechanan, that's already three karbanas because he realized, he realized three different times. Rish Lakish says, no, he didn't separate a karban. It's all, it's all one. That's the machlekes. Aval achar af rasha. But after he separates a karban, might the Rish Lakish Rabbi Yechanan, then Rabbi Rish Lakish would agree. He designated the guy for breakfast. I ate it. Okay, there's a carbon. I ate it for lunch. Okay, I have to bring another carbon. And the chayv stayim that he's chayv to. Oy dilma, or maybe that's not the machlekes. This yad leilachar af rasha pligi that the whole machlekes is only after he designates a carbon. Rabbi Yechon is not so strict that he remembers breakfast and he remembers lunch and that he's already chayv three carbonas or two, whatever it is. It's no. Even Rabbi Yechon only holds that it's after the half rasha. After you designated a carbon, the Mar the Marsava Frashis Machalka is the Marsava Kaparis Machalka is. Rabbi Yechanan says, Well, you designated a carbon, now you have to designate it a new, a new carbon because you have another awareness. Uh, however, Rish Lakish says, No, Rish Lakish says, You didn't bring the carbon yet. It's only if you brought the carbon. But if it's before you actually designated a carbon, then Maidle Rabbi Yechanan Rish Lakish, Rabbi Yechanan would agree that it's only Chai of one Chatas. Dene Chai Valachas. Oidilma, we have a third option here. Bain bazu, bain bazu machlekes. Maybe the machlekes is across the board. It doesn't matter. It's, it's awareness, hafrasha, and they're arguing about both cases. Maybe. Amalei, so Ravashi responds to Ravina. This is the end of the Gemara. Um, bain bazu, bain bazu machlekes. The machlekes is about everything whether it's after Rav Rasha or before Rav Rasha, Rav Yechon and Rish Lakish have the same opinion, the high of one or two, by, by everything. 
Let's say the machlekes is only before you separate. After you separate the carbon, even Rish Lakish would agree. Let's say. But after you separate the carbon, Rabbi Reish Lakish would agree that Yechayev too, the Chayev Stayim. So then why did you say, when we quoted Rabbi Yechanan's Pasuk, we said, Oi, al that you have to bring a separate carbon. We said, how is that going to fit with Reish Lakish? We have a Pasuk that you have to bring a separate carbon. So he says, what did we do? We said, If Rabbi Reish Lakish agrees to Rabbi Yechanan, Lachar Kapara. Over here, we're saying that he agrees to him even Lachar Afrasha. Lachar Kapara means after the carbon's brought. Lachar Afrasha. If he agrees to him Lachar that even after it's designated, then why do you use the Pasuk to tell me Lachar Kapara? You could have told me even after Afrasha, after you separated it. I have, a, I have a better sort. I have a better usage of Rabbi Yechanan's Pasuk, even after it was designated. Let's go the other way. If the machlekes is only achar afrasha, after you separate a carbon, avol koydem afrasha mightily. Rabbi Yechon Rish Lakish stand chayav al achas, but before you separate a carbon, Rabbi Yechon agrees to Rish Lakish. Adam ukele krabe kazayis mechza. Why does Rabbi Yechon need to tell me that one carbon will cover a kazayis and a half, even though he wasn't a, 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 didn't have awareness of that half right away? Why does he have to use that case? What do you mean? Look me koydem afrasha. He could use that pasuk to tell me. Anything before the carbon is designated, that it always covers it. The Gemara says, Maybe we don't really know that that's the pshat. And when we use the Pasuk to tell me Lachar Kapara, or for Rabbi Yechanan, we use the Pasuk to tell me Kazayas and a half, we said, Im Tim Talayma. If you would say, uh, in other words, we're being safe, we're doing it safe, maybe. Im Tim Talayma Kamar. If you say that they're arguing before the half Russia, but after half Russia, everyone agrees. That's pligi ba rabbi yech. Kaidem half Russia pligi ba rabbi yechen and hechem ukelilakra. Then what would rabbi yechen do with the pasuk? Because I asked him. Then that's what he would do with the pasuk. If you argue the other way, if the if the argument is different, then I would use the pasuk differently. I would say that it's talking about kaidem half Russia. And if we say that it's after Afrasha, that's the Machlaikis Rabbi Yech, after it's the carbon is separated, that's when, according to Rabbi Yechanan, I need to bring two Karbanas. So what does Rish Lakish do with the Pasuk? So Rish Lakish Yechemuch Kapara, then he uses it for Lacha Kapara. Okay. So... Um, so we're concluding that they argue across the board. Yeah. And we don't really, but we don't have a proof that that's the machlekes because it could be an imtim tzalaim as well. Right? That's how we, and it was the proof that we had isn't really there. Okay. Amar Ula. It's a slight complication, yeah. In the following Gemara, um, let me just point out in this past Gemara, um, we quoted Abaya and Rava saying that if someone eats three kazesim of chalev, eats a kazayas, and in the same forgetting eats another kazayas, then he, re- he knows about the first one, but he doesn't know about the second one. So then he eats a third kazayas. And it depends when he brings the carbon, or if he brings it then. So all of that was very, it was very clear from that Gemara that the awareness afterwards doesn't affect the, the it's only the awareness in, in, while the, the violations are being committed that will divide it up. That was very clear from that. So Rashi explains that what's going on over here with Rabbi Yechanan? According to Rabbi Yechanan, it gets divided up even afterwards. Um, Rashi says that it's if the machlaikis is kaidem afrasha, before you separate a carbon, 
just the awareness, then we'll have to say that Abayin Rav only follow Rish Lakish. But if we say that it's Lachar Afrasha, then they can go like, like Rabbi Yechanan as well. Then they can go like Kuliyama. That's, that's what he says. All right. Now, Amar Ula. Ula says, Lamanda Amar Asham Vade, Leibay Yediya Betchila. Yeah, but take this, um, take this to the other room so it doesn't make noise by the shear, okay? You want to take it to the other room? Just don't trip. Don't trip. Careful. There's a machlekes Rabbi Kivin Rabbi Tarfin. It's a machlekes regarding Meila. Now, Meila is, uh, is a very interesting halacha. Uh, if someone has personal benefit from if someone has personal benefit from something that belongs to Hekdesh. So <clears throat> he's chayev an asham meilis. He's chayev an asham. An asham is a is a zachar, a male animal. Now, <clears throat> if someone is chayev a chatas. He brings a, a chatas as a female animal. If someone isn't sure that he's chay of a chatas, there's an asham that's called an asham tali. So in the interim, like uh, Chaim was saying before, that um, he could have protection, even though he possibly did a sin, he could have protection by bringing an asham tali. Uh, and then if he finds out that he really did the sin, then he would bring a, a chatas. It's a separate karba. What happens by if someone isn't sure that he did me'ila? So is there an asham taloi for an asham vadai? Asham taloi is usually brought when there's a suffolk if he did a, uh, an avera that incurs chatas. So it's a machlekes Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Tarfan. One opinion holds, I think Rabbi Akiva holds that you do bring an asham taloi. Mikiva holds you do bring an Ashim Tali for a suffolk if he did Me'ila. Then what happens? If he finds out that it was real Me'ila, then we'll bring an Ashim Vade, uh, a Me'ila. No, it's called Asham Me'ilas. Reb Tarfin says, one second. Reb Tarfin says, both Karbanas, Ashim Tali and an Ashim Vade, are are both the same animal, so he says that he can make a condition. He says if it's really if I if I did meila, then this is a carbon meila, and if it's not, uh, then it could just be an asham an, uh, an tali. So, according to Reb Tarfin, I can bring an Asham, uh, I can bring an Asham Tali, I can bring an Asham Vadai uh, without really knowing that I did a sin. There was no Yediyah. A Chatas, there has to be Yediyah. There's no question. If you don't know that you did the sin, there's no awareness of the sin, you can't bring a Chatas. However, there is this one opinion that holds that an Asham Vadai I could bring, even though I don't know that I did the sin, Riptarfin, that says you can make a condition and, that, and it could be counted as an Asham Vade. It's a chiddush. That's Riptarfin's shita. Ula says, according to the opinion that holds, Asham Vade, loy boy yidiya betchila. According to his opinion, that an Asham Vade doesn't need this awareness. So let's take a look at the following case. We're on top of Ayan Bez. Baal Chamish Bilas Beshivcha Charufa. Let's say someone lived with a Shivcha Charufa. Shifcha Harufa is a non-Jewish slave, maidservant, non-Jewish maidservant, that's, that's designated for an Eved Ivri. An Eved Ivri is allowed to be with a non-Jewish maidservant. It's not a real marriage, <laughs> Dr. Stein. That is not um, politically correct. <laughs> 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 the, the lawyer is saying, my client is insane. <laughs> my client is insane. 
<laughs> Anytime you want to kick him off. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so uh, if someone lives with a shif- with this shifcha charufi, it's not the Eved Ivri. Eved Ivri is allowed to. Someone else lives with the shifcha charufa. And in between, oh, I have to tell you, there's an interesting Allah regarding a shifcha charufa that if someone b'mezid lives with a shifcha charufa, with this maidservant that's designated for an Eved Ivri, b'mezid, he knows that she's designated, he knows that the uh, that it's a non-Jewish slave, he has a full awareness. He's only high of one carbon, even if he lives with her many times. He lives with her b'shoigig, and in between the sh- each shoigig, he has awareness. Well, what does awareness do? If it's a mazid, it does nothing. If it's a shoigig, then it becomes not a shoigig, granted. It becomes not a shoigig. The only problem is that according to Reb Tarfan, if awareness by an Ashem Vada is meaningless, because I could bring an Ashem Vada even without awareness, then does the awareness divide up the Shaygig? That's what we're discussing here. So Ula claims, Ula says, uh, that Lamandam, according to this opinion, that uh, Reb Tarfin says, that you can bring an Ashem Vada without any real awareness. So bol chamesh bilis b'shiv v'charuf ain't a chayiv v'lachas. The awareness doesn't do anything to an ashem vada. You're only going to be chayiv one. It doesn't divide it up into separate sins. Maskev lo rav amnuna. Rav amnuna asks to Ula, elamayata. If that's the case, you one carbon. Bol. I think it's supposed to be bol v'hifrish carbon. If someone um, uh, lives with a shifcha charufa. And then he separates a carbon. Va'amar, he'll just going to come and say, Wait, I can, for the price of uh, one, I can get to, uh, I can commit another sin because awareness doesn't, doesn't, uh, there's, a, there's a sale today. Uh, the, uh, I, can, uh, I can fit in another sin in with one sacrifice. Hemtinli li'ad she'evel. Hachinami dein nechai v'lachas. He's only going to be chai of one, according to this. It's not so clear because there's. Let's just see. Amalei, he says, Maisa de lachera frasha karmat. You're talking about a sin after there's designation. Maisa de lachera frasha. Like, I mean, I wasn't talking about after the sacrifice is designated. We're just talking about that it was um, awareness. That's what, that's what Ula's, Ula was saying. Kiyasa Rav Dimi, when Rav Dimi came, Amar Lamanda Marasham Vadi Ba Yidiya Bitchila, according to the opinion that holds exactly the opposite, according to Rabbi Akiva, that holds that you that there's no such thing as an Asham Vadai, which means like Asham Meila. So if someone does Meila, he's not sure about it. That he's going to bring one Karban as an Asham Tali, and that's going to cover an Asham Vadi as well, according to the opinion that that doesn't work. Why? Because he doesn't have a full awareness of the sin. He doesn't know if it was really a sin. So according to the opinion of Rabbi Akiva, then Baal Chamesh Bilas B'Shiv Chacharufa Chai Valkalachas Vachas. If he knows in the middle, then in between these livings with the Shiv Chacharufa, I mean, he's the, the, in between these relations, he's going to be Chayev for each one. Why? Because awareness makes a difference for an Hashem Vadeh. It separates it. It separates it. It's, uh, uh, awareness is significant. He's only chayiv in Hashem Vade once there's awareness. So then each one is going to be chayiv separately. Amalei Abaya, Abaya says, Harechatas to be in Yedir Betchila. Shifra Harufa is different because because Baya Chatas You need to know before you bring the chatas. And upligi Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. And over there, there's a machlekas between Rabbi Yochanan and, and Rish Lakish. If someone has awareness afterwards, if that divides it up. 
And over here, you're saying that everyone is going to agree that it gets divided up. Maybe not. Maybe Rish Lakish would hold that it doesn't get divided up. Now, there's a slight difference between the cases. That's the, you see, Machlekes Rabbi and Rish Lakish was when there's awareness afterwards. Uh, first he knows about one, then he knows about the other. Now we're talking about there's awareness in between. And everyone should agree that that divides it up. However, the only difference is, is that if it would be bemazed, there would anyways be only one carbon. So awareness in between to us by the Shifcha Harufa, we're ignoring the awareness in between. We're going to say that that the, 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 we're going to say like this, that Reish Lakish's awareness afterwards, which th- is not effective, uh, if it's divided up, it, it's not effective to divide it up, that's going to be the same thing as an awareness in between by a Shifcha Harufa, where Mezid doesn't matter, where me, even if it's Mezid um, many times, it's all one carbon. That's what we're asking here. The case is not perfectly uh, similar, but we're saying why, it, you know, why is this Gemara coming in here? Well, we had a Machlekes Rabbi Yechim Rishlakish about awareness, if that can divide up into separate Karbanas. Now we're saying, according to Rabbi Akiva, awareness divides up um, the Shifcha Harufa, the uh, relations with the Shifcha Harufa, into separate Karbanas. We're asking one second, that was a Machlekes Rabbi Yechim and Rishlakish. So the Gemara says, Amalei Dilma Bemaisa de Lachara Frasha Kamrit, Ukidrav Nuna. Maybe we're dealing with, we're dealing with that there was a separation of Karbanas in between. And then it's going to divide it up. In other words, everyone is going to agree to that. That if there was a separation of carbonus in between each relations, then it's going to be a separate carbon. Amalei in. He says, yes, that's what we're talking about. Who was saying this? This is Rav Dimi. Kiyasa Ravan. Ravan came. Because we have, these are three travelers. Ula came and he spoke about Rav Tarfan, that awareness would not divide it up. Rav Dimi came, he speaks about Rabbi Akiva, that awareness does divide it up into separate actions. Ravan comes and he says... Everyone agrees regarding a shifcha harufa, and again, everyone agrees regarding a shifcha harufa. But machlekes be shifcha harufa, and there's also an argument about a shifcha harufa. Everyone agrees regarding a shifcha harufa that the only chay of one kedula, according to that opinion, according to the opinion of Tarfin. Everyone agrees by a shifcha harufa that yichayev for each time there's relations. That's like Rav Hamnuna said. That's talking about after there was designation of the sacrifice. So it's a separate sacrifice for each one. According to the opinion that holds that Asham Vadi requires Yediya, the opinion of Rabbi Akiva, then we're going to have a machlekes Rabbi Yechon and Rishim ben Lakish if awareness will divide it up or not, because awareness is significant, will awareness divide up by the Shifcha Harufa? And not that would be a Machlekes Rabbi Yechanan and Rishlakis, the Machlekes that we had before. <clears throat> let's try to go uh, in another five minutes, let's see if we can get to the next. There's a slight problem here because the Gemara doesn't explain itself and it, it's going to leave us in the middle. Itmar, was a statement. Statement of Amiraim. Here we're entering into a sugya. And it's called Mesasik. Mesasik means that I did not intend for the action that occurred. It's different than a shaygig. A shaygig is um, I didn't intend to violate anything. I didn't know it was Shabbos. I didn't know. I didn't know that it was us, sir. But I definitely intended to cut, to harvest, to grind. That, that I was fully aware. I was fully aware of my action. I just didn't know that it was prohibited. Masasik is, I had no intention for this action to occur. There must be legal terms for these types of uh, things. Anyway, that's the Hebrew legal terms. 
Shegig and versus Misasik. So Niskavan Lag Bias at Talash Vachatachas and Machuber. Pater. A knife fell. Someone's knife fell. And he's trying to pick up something. While he's picking up something, he ends up uh, he's trying to pick up something that was already cut. While he's picking up something, this thing that was already cut, he ends up cutting something that was attached. He had no intention to make that cutting, but there was a knife that was there and he was picking it up. He ended up picking up the knife and cutting the, uh, something that was attached to the ground. Um, he harvested on Shabbos. Why do you have to say there's a knife? Why can't you say just chotach is he thought that he was picking up a mango that was on the floor and really it was attached to the vine or whatever? That could be as well. That could be as well. Rashi gives that a, that case. In the scaven like bia satala, she says, "Kain the nafal sakin barugasiyah." In the scaven like bia, he says that he's he's intending just to pick up a knife. He ends up cutting the uh, what's something that's attached. Whatever the case is, he didn't intend for the action that that happened. Lach deches atalash v'chatach has mechuber. Let's say he was outside cutting uh, whatever his mangoes, right? And it turns out while he's cutting, there was a vine or something uh, so that was uh, attached. He ends up cutting the, uh, so he was intending to cut, but he wasn't intending to cut something that was attached to the ground. He was cutting. Not like the other one, where he wasn't intending to cut at all. Here's intending to cut. So Rav Amar Potter, Rav says, he's misasik. He didn't intend to do the action of cutting something that's attached. That's a separate sort of action. Abaya Mechayev. Abaya says, no, he's chayev. He was intending to cut. That's not Misasik. He had intention to cut. Not this, but he had intention to cut. Rav Amar Pater. Rav says he's Pater Delenus Gavan Lechatich Adisura. Rav says he wasn't intending for a forbidden action. Abaya Mechayev. Abaya says, no, cutting is cutting. He was intending to cut, and he cut. He's, uh, he's chayev. That's considered a shagig, not misasik. Um, I think I should leave it here because the Gemara is not going to get explained until the, as it goes on.